Right, we're back at the shop. We've got this beautiful natural that I've kind of forced dried quick over a week. It was already on the down tree. The tree was already dead, but it wasn't fully seasoned. So I've been putting this on the radiator and keeping this warm for about a week. Because it was partially seasoned, it didn't crack too bad. But that's why you always cut it long so you can you can um, anticipate cracks. So this is dried. It's a lovely shaped fork. Lovely shaped fork. I'm going to get a nice catapult out of this. I've got good thickness. I've got good width. And I've got these two knots here. Which I will be able to incorporate into the ergonomics of the frame. And it will also look quite nice. So yeah, really happy with this ash fork. Ash is great catapult wood here in the UK, Ireland, because it grows in this cup shape of a fork a lot of times. So you can get quite a low, quite a wide fork catapult that you can't get on conventional sort of v shape ones. So yeah, let's get this boy marked and cut down. So we're going to mark it big. And then we're going to sand it down. So I'm going to mark it there roughly at 100 mil, and we'll end up at 90. And I'm going to cut it below this section, so probably about there. So let's get this cut on the saw. <laughs> You can take it away lads, but you can't put it back on. That's the number one rule when making matties. Okay, so instead of using a linisher like you've just seen me using, you can get yourself a dowel and some sandpaper. I've just stuck this on with some double-sided tape and you can use this for shaping. And it does work quite well, but you know, I've saved up and worked hard to buy the tools. I'm going to use them. But, you know... This will do the same thing, it'll just take a little bit longer. And this way you're less likely to make a mistake in shaping. Because some of the machines can remove material so fast and so quickly and so efficiently that sometimes you can take more off than what you would like, but... This thing is a, a beautiful shape. You know, if I was any good at carving, I could carve that into some sort of bird's head with this as the beak. But I'm no good at carving. <laughs> so we're not going to do that. Maybe we'll try that together for the first time. But I hope you guys can appreciate that as a beautiful natural. Ash is special as well because, like I said, grows into nice forks, cup shaped. Typically, get them low and wide. Although they are one like this is extremely hard to find, so you guys will appreciate this who have made or looked for ash forks that this is a good fork. Okay, let's do some more sanding. Okay, so I'm just going to bring you over here to the side of the workbench again. Instead of a power tool, a power sander, we've looked at our dial with our sandpaper. Now we've got a flat surface sand, sand and pad. And you can use the workpiece instead of moving the sandpaper. And you can see the, the sawdust getting stripped away there. It actually does work very good, this method, because 
you've more purchase on the workpiece compared to if you were to hold the sandpaper and it's great for getting these flat surface forks you know the way I do them square off the tips so just another tip if you don't have the power tools you don't need it okay so I've got this sanded in to 90 degrees but the fork tips are still high and I can afford to take quite a good bit off so using my frame saw now I'm just going to cut them down ever so slightly rather than sand it Okay, so we are back onto the Linisher 150 grit sand and spindle and I'm going to start off here in a couple of forks and then maybe do a little bit more handle work. So that's it for 150 grit. I'm going to move over to my other linisher here with the disc sander and do a 400 grit face. Okay, one more go on the bobbin sander, 500 grit. So here we are so far. It's beautiful. Yeah, really pleased with that. Very ergonomic. <laughs> temperature it's set at in degrees Celsius, actual temperature degrees Celsius. So when this heats up to 370, we're going to do my logo branded on. So we're getting there, 370. We're going to burn this in the middle. Again, this probably isn't the best way to do it, but it's the way I like to do it because I feel like I've got more control when I've got the workpiece in my hand. And it's... It's kind of hard to get it square and level and right. There's a knack to it. And I've got a good start there. I think I may have moved it. Oh, nerve wracking. Lovely. How about that? ever so slightly embossed okay what color 
will we dye this? This has got to be dyed. I've done my last one blue. I'm thinking I'm going to do this one green. Right. So here we have our dye. Everybody always asks me what this dye is. Here it is, Dartford's Interior Spirit Wood Dye. Loads of different colours. I specifically wanted a spirit based dye because it penetrates better than the, the water based ones. Moment of truth. This is going to look awesome. Sneak peek. Let's get that in there. How is it going to fit? Yeah. So I've actually messed with this a bit and submerging them doesn't make any difference whatsoever to the overall colour of the thing. But it's handier to dip them and make a big mess. That's gonna look nice when it's wiped off. So here we are, all cleaned up, wiped off. And I think that came out beautiful. Green is such a natural colour. And I felt it was a good choice for this one. Although it would have looked great blue or orange as well. But I'm loving the green. Okay, so here we are, dried. I'm actually going to sand just the face at 3000 grit. And it's going to take some of that colour away and just leave slightly higher polished um, target side forks. So that actually brought a beautiful shine to the front of the forks. Again, you don't need a high powered sander, all you need there is a flat surface and elbow grease. Yeah, I think I'll uh, dip this in oil and then wax it. Who else does this? I like to put mine in front of a little fan heater for a moment before I apply the finish for extra soakage, soak up a little bit more. I do think it helps with longevity, especially on bark. Okay, so we're quite hot now. We're just going to go into some boiled linseed. Alright guys, here we are, all finished up. I think it turned out fabulous. The green machine, or the pecker. Let's have a few shots.
Alright guys, so I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Drop me a comment, let me know what you think. These bands I've used are uh, Green GZK.8 and what I've done here is I've tapered the narrow 18mm to 10mm I've added 20 in length so they're not close to maxed out they're a narrow taper and this is how you can make a thicker band shoot a lighter ammo you know they are matched up quite well it is a fairly heavy pull compared to say a 0.5 band but I'm still getting good speeds the band isn't overpowering the ammo because like I said it's narrower and it's a lot longer so it's not uh, the rubber isn't taxed the same because of the extra length and because it's that bit narrower so this is a good example of how you can use a thicker band to shoot a lighter ammo make it narrower and make it longer and you can bet your bottom dollar that because these are so far off maxed out they, they will last a long time not the most efficient way to shoot 8 mil steel but certainly a very good way to shoot 8 mil steel you see me there hitting things getting good speed it's a wee bit heavier but these are going to last a long time the reason I use this um, is because I didn't want to have like a 20 or a 22 mil band coming around the edge of my fork tip I wanted a narrower band and I wanted to show how really with infinite lengths and tapers that we have you can make any band shoot any ammo you just need to find the right taper and that comes with experimentation which I implore you guys to do so anyway that's it for this video thank you ever so much for watching remember to hit that like button drop me a comment and I'll see you guys next time got more stuff good stuff coming soon